Hi there, welcome to CalicoCon. My name is Jeff Burke. I'm a senior cloud solutions architect at Tsunati. I've been in IT for 20 years and specifically been doing data protection for the last 13 years. Uh, in about 2019, I got interested in Kubernetes and since then have been able to get all these certifications. And right now I'm focusing more on Kubernetes networking. So my talk today is about isolating namespaces by using Calico network policies, global network policies, because they can isolate all the namespaces, unlike default Kubernetes policies. But I'll go into that later. The goal of this talk is not only to introduce people to Calico network policies, but also to allow you to create the same system on your laptops. Because the problem I find with some of these talks is that you listen to it, you go away, and then at least in my case, I forget it. So you're gonna set this up, or you can set this up as well on your laptop, and then go off and experiment and test and practice, okay? What's the agenda for my talk today? First of all, we're gonna discuss why we need network isolation to begin with. Next, we're gonna create our own local test environment. Then we're gonna create and test isolation. And when I mean create, I mean create some applications and net namespaces. Okay, so why do we need network isolation? Well, for security, okay? You really should, you know, isolate your network. Now, for a simple demonstration of this, what happens if you install your top secret application in a top secret namespace? And then your friend, well, maybe not your friend, but someone comes along and installs a hacker application in a hacker namespace. Well, the problem is that Kubernetes by default does not automatically deny any traffic between namespaces, which means the hacker application can happily talk to the top secret application. Probably not a good thing. Remember, in the virtualization world, in the physical server world, we always had isolation for different purposes. So I think this is pretty obvious. Now, there's also compliance reasons. There could be compliance reasons, procedure reasons where certain applications simply must be separate. So the CEO's, you know, salary, <laughs> photos, you know, whatever, <laughs> that has to be separate. All right, performance as well. Sometimes you want applications to be completely in their own little bubble. Okay, so we're gonna create our test environment. And the way we're gonna do this is we'll go to Rancher Desktop, okay, IO, right? And if you go there, you will see this, and right underneath, you have here a, a choice between Linux, Windows, Mac, Intel, or Mac Silicon, so the ARM processor. So it gives you a choice. Now, that is simple enough. You download it, you run the installer, there's nothing really difficult about it, and you shouldn't encounter any problems. They also have a great Slack channel too if you need any help. Um, I've asked numerous times and gotten responses. So run the installer, there is one difference. Once you have it up and running, and uh, it'll come up and basically show you this. It'll ask you a few questions about um, giving access to your local network, which is straightforward. But what you want to do is go to preference. There's a preference menu, and in the preferences, I'll pop that up right here. It takes a few seconds. Uh, it will ask you what container engine do you want to use? And we want to use Docker Mobi, okay? Just keep that in mind, Docker Mobi. We're also going to not check Kubernetes. We're not going to enable Kubernetes, okay? We're going to do this a little bit differently. And there's a reason for that, and I'll explain as we go along. So remember to choose the Docker, the Mobi version of Docker, once you have it installed. Okay, and there's a little photo of it. I just showed you anyways, but there you go. All right. And um, once it's online, it will take a few seconds. You'll see in the lower left cor uh, hand corner, a little running bar, and but it'll be obvious when it's finished, you'll see. Okay, next though, we're going to install Kind, all right? Now, Kind is Kubernetes in Docker. And what this allows us to do is to create like a two node cluster. In fact, you can create as many nodes as you want. Um, but it's very, very useful because it allows you, especially for testing network things, network policies. It's not as good if you're gonna try to test huge uh, workloads. It's not built for that, okay? So we will go over and install that as well. 
And there's, as you can see here, a quick start uh, location on their page. I'll just bring that page up to you uh, so you can see it as well. There it is, kind. Um, in fact, there's quick start right here. Uh, and it gives you the basic details. It's also just a very quick run install. Now you can do this also on um, various operating systems as well. So I'm on a Mac OS, so I use brew install. On Windows, it's an EXE. Okay. Now, next what we're gonna do is we want to create a cluster, and it's very easy to do. What I have done is created a small, um, Calico two node, not Calico, I'm sorry, a small Kubernetes uh, cluster. It's Calico Con, so I've kind of like gotten Calico in my mind everywhere. But a Kubernetes cluster in kind, a two node Kubernetes cluster in kind. And the uh, command you're going to run is kind create cluster dash dash config. And then you have a YAML file, which I'm going to have in this slides for you right now in a second. So I'll move that to the next one. There it is. Um, You'll have the slides available, so you don't have to <laughs> furiously try to copy this down right now. Um, might be bad for your health. Um, okay, so we're gonna do that, and I will show you again what I'm gonna do. So here is my location. I just cleared my screen to make it nice and neat. Uh, there it is, so it's the Kind Calico Cluster. Uh, I'm just gonna test to make sure I don't have any clusters there already, just in case, always check. This will take a while and say it failed, which is good. Yes, there's nothing there, good, okay. So, what we're gonna do is run our command. So, kind create, and I believe it was, uh, I don't remember myself, you see, because nervous. Uh, kind create cluster dash dash config calico, cluster calico YAML. Okay, so we're gonna create this two node cluster by running the kind create cluster dash dash config kind cluster calico dot yaml and again you can name that yaml file anything you want that's just for the purpose of the command so there we go off it is running i like the little icons by the way that kind does so we'll wait for that to run now um again you've got the powerpoint here with the kind yaml it's a very simple uh, yaml file so nothing really to worry about there okay so we're going to let that run, and when it finishes, what we should be able to do is see the cluster created. Now, it will not be ready because we will not have a CNI. And if you looked in the YAML file, you'll notice that I put disable default CNI because Kind comes with its own CNI, but we want to leverage Calico because otherwise we won't be able to use Calico network policies. All right, so let's go back and take a look. And it looks like it is finished. Have a nice day. How often do you see software say have a nice day when it's finished? No. Okay, so that's quite nice. All right, so we have this installed. Let's do the cube ctl get nodes command. And there we go. We have our two node cluster. And as you can see, the status is not ready, which we expected. All right, so what are we going to do next? Next, we are going to create the Tigera operator. We're gonna install the operator for uh, Calico. It's recommended, um, it works very well. So um, you can also do a, a YAML file, but Calico operators in general are better, we'll create CRDs. And um, so we're gonna do that right now. Now we're also, as you can see here, going to uh, get some custom resources in there. We have to put the custom resources in as well. Okay, so there is the link right there. We're gonna create it directly from the Calico site and we will let that run and it is done. Now, we also have to uh, install the customer sources as well. Okay, so we will install those customer sources and wait for that to install and they are created. Excellent. Okay, so the after doing this installation, we should see in a few seconds, you have to be a bit patient, our cluster should show ready. So let's do a kubectl get nodes. And we're still waiting. It takes some time because it will create um, all the pauses. I mean, you can even go and check and see them being created if you wanted to. kubectl get pods or get po if you want to short in the cube system namespace. And you can see that the core DNS 
pods are being created and they will normally be in a state pending if there is no CNI. So it takes a little few seconds for this thing to power up and lo and behold, there we go, we are ready. All right, so you have to be patient, depends on your system. Okay, so we're ready to go and now we're gonna start our little experiment. So we're gonna create a namespace called Top Secret and a namespace called Hacker Zone. I thought we'd make it interesting. So let's do that. Uh, we will now uh, kubectl create ns top, I think I have a dash secret. Okay. And we're gonna create a namespace kubectl create ns hacker zone. Okay. So that is done. What do we next have to do? So next, uh, we are going to check to see if they've been created, which I think they have, but you know, better check. So get NS for a short namespace, and there we have it. We've got the top secret namespace, and we have the hacker zone namespace. And you also see the Tigera operator namespace. That's in fact where we would have checked the Tigera pods being created after we did our installation. Okay, so that is up and running, we are good. So now we're gonna create a couple of little applications. And again, this is just our fun little example. This system can be reused many times and you can wipe it out, clean it up and go out of it again and go deeper and deeper and that's the idea. So while this might seem a little bit beginnerish, that's in fact what we're doing. Okay, so we're gonna do a kubectl run hacker image nginx in the namespace hacker zone. So let's do that. So kubectl run and uh, I believe I called this hacker and it's gonna be the image equals nginx and it's in the namespace hacker zone okay so we're going to run that off it goes and now we're going to run a, another pod which we're going to call top secret i believe what are we going to call it i forgot already so secret pod okay that makes it easier so we're going to call this secret secret you can call it whatever you want actually secret pod and same thing nginx image no big deal in the top secret namespace okay off that goes excellent okay so we've got those two uh pods coming up and what are we going to do next okay so first and foremost we're going to get the ips of the pods okay so to do that it's quite simple we'll do a cube cuddle get pod namespace hacker zone o wide okay so let's do that um cube ctl get po and namespace uh, hacker zone and we're going to do an OY because that will show us the IP address as well and as we can see here there it is there's the IP address and let's do that also for our other pod as well okay and that was our secret pod I believe uh, in the top secret namespace okay and we can see there so one's uh 192.168.162.34 that's the secret pod and the hacker pod is 192.168.162.133 all right so we have that we have the information we've got it all running great what are we going to do okay let's go into the hacker pod now uh, if you're new to kubernetes or you haven't done much of this you can actually go into a pod and do things you know commands whatnot if that container, the pods container, allows it, because you can create a container with no shell, basically, or with no, or with a shell, but no commands. So you're not going to be able to do much in here. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We are going to go into the hacker zone pod. Okay, so to do that, we're going to do a cube cuddle, and then we're going to do an exec command, and um, in the namespace hacker zone, and if you press um, you should have auto completion, so you can press tab, it'll auto complete. Okay, and our pod is hacker, and we're gonna be interactive, and we're gonna go right into bash, okay? Luckily, Nginx has bash, so if you like the bash shell, there you go, you have it. Okay, and what do we wanna try to do? Well, let's try to look at the other pod. Now, Nginx, as you know, is a small little web server, very convenient for things like this, like tests, so let's do a curl on the other pod. IP address, okay, which is 168.162.134. And look at that, welcome to Nginx. So what we've done is we've gone inside the hacker pod and we've gotten the web page from the top secret pod, okay? Now, if you can do that, you can do a lot more too. You can look for exploits, you can do all sorts of fun stuff. So it's probably not a good thing as we talked about before. 
okay? All right, so we get in there. That's not great. Um, another thing I want to do too, just for the fun of it, is, and this is important for security as well, because you might have just answered me and said, well, okay, Jeff, you know, I'll just have a, uh, a pod and it won't have anything in it, a container won't have anything in it. Mm, yes, but the problem is people can install things in containers. Now, there are limitations and whatnot, but I just wanted to show you the concept of why uh, it's important that security doesn't go anywhere when it comes to Kubernetes. It, it's just as important as before, including network security. So what we're going to do is we're inside this hacker pod. Let's do an apt update, okay? Just like a normal, you know, Linux box, apt up, update. There it goes. It's doing an update, all right? And now let's do something else. Let's install the ipUtils ping, okay? So we're going to run app install ipUtils ping. So apt install ipUtils dash ping, okay? And look at that. It'll install it. So, okay, this is a container. As you know, containers have the bare minimum in them, in them, right? It's for security, but also mainly for performance. But I was able to do this. So what does this mean? It means I can ping that. Uh, now, so I can't remember what the IP was. Uh, so there we go. So what I'm just trying to demo here is that, okay, we didn't have ping installed before here. I should have shown that there was no ping, um, but now I can ping, so I can install. So, you know, depending on the container or the pod, just because it doesn't have a utility there that a hacker can use, doesn't mean that a hacker, once he gets, or he or she gets access, uh, doesn't mean they can't install it. Doesn't mean they can't figure things out. So that's why you have to shut things down. So right there, we did not have ping. The default Nginx container does not have ping. Guess what? I installed ping. So it could be anything else. I can install netcat, all sorts of crazy things. So keep that in mind. All right. So that was not good. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to create, and this is best practice, a default uh, deny policy. And again, the beauty of the Calico policies is that they go across many namespaces, okay, which is important because Kubernetes network policies work and they're fine and you can use them, I mean, with Calico, if you install Calico, the problem is that you have to do them for each namespace. Now, if it's one or two namespaces, no big deal. But if it's a big organization, you have like 60 namespaces, do you want to spend your whole day creating separate policies for different namespaces? Not to mention it's a lot of hard work, but also the capability for creating errors is enormous. Calico has global network policies, which means that you can create global ones. But you can also use Kubernetes names uh, network policy as well. So that's the beauty of the Calico setup. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to create a Calico deny policy so that we will demonstrate that this will no longer work, this um, uh, ability to ping or to contact the other pod. So we have our example here of a default deny policy, a Calico one, and we will install this. Okay. And, um, okay. So we have our example here of a Calico deny policy and we're going to install it. Okay. So we will press it. And as we can see here, we've successfully created a global network policy. All right. So now, why don't we try to test it? So I'm going to go back to my command of going into the hacker pod, as you can see here. And now let's try again to ping the other pod. And look at that. We cannot do it. Okay. Let's try the curl then. All right. We'll go back. There's our curl command. Boom. Not working. So we have successfully created a global deny policy. We can no longer contact the other pod. All right. So we've achieved what we wanted to do. And I've got it in the uh, slides here showing exactly what we did. All right. And um, the other thing that we can do too is to run a NS checker. Okay. Which is a lot of fun. <laughs> so we're going to create a namespace called check, um, run an NS checker, that's namespace checker. We're going to create an NS, i.e. namespace called check. Let's get out of that pod. Let's clear our desktop. So we're going to kube cuddle, create namespace check. All right. It's going to be a lot of fun. And what are we going to do? We're going to create an Nginx, Nginx image, but called check. Okay. So we're going to call this pod checker. 
and it's going to be in the namespace check. So kubectl run checker in the namespace check that we just created. Okay. Oh, it would help if I told it what image we're going to use. Image equals engine X. All right, there we go. All right, so that'll be running. And what we're going to do is show you that this also uh, is going to be blocked. So what's important about this? Well, you might be saying, okay, great. Uh, but what happens when I create a new pod? Well, the global policy will work on the new pod. So let's find out what that IP address is. So kubectl get pod in the checker and check namespace, I'm sorry, OY to get the IP address. There it is. And now let's go back into our bad pod, our hacker pod, and let's see what we can do with this fellow. So let's do a ping 192.168.162.135. Same thing. Okay. So this is part of the whole zero trust kind of, you know, thinking. Uh, you set up a global policy and it's there. Every new namespace application you install will be affected by this global policy. So the room for error is minimal. Now, it does mean that when you do create a new namespace, you will have to create policies to allow traffic, okay? So you have to keep that in mind. But I think you'd rather do that than to uh, be making mistakes and allowing tons of traffic that you don't want. All right, so this was a simple setup. Okay, I wasn't going to go too deep. I didn't create any policies to show you how to allow traffic. Um, that's quite simple as well. They're all in the documentation. You can do it. But um, I wanted you to see how this works and show you some very simple basics. More importantly, you now have an environment to play with this. All right. And you can go to the Calico Slack channels. You can start creating all sorts of policies for your different namespaces. I would highly advise you too to go go to the Calico uh, site and do their free Calico certification course. So they have a, ta a Tigera operator Calico course. Um, I would say it's basic, but it's it's a good course. It's not basic in the sense of simple. It's basic in the sense that you can go in there knowing next to nothing and you'll come out knowing quite a bit. So you can do that there. That's a course where you go through and you type things and instruct, uh, but then of course goes away. What you can do after you finish is come back to this setup and do it all again or play around. All right. Okay, everybody. Now, I wasn't going to just leave you like that with a default deny policy on your cluster. I mean, what if you didn't take my advice and did this on your laptop, but did this in production? And your boss says, hey, what's wrong? You said, well, I'm practicing my Calico network policies. And there's a global one that denies everything, but I don't know how to allow anything. <laughs> well, that might not be a good idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to play around with opening some stuff up. Now, I know that networking can be really complicated. I find it complicated. But remember, Calico has great documentation. I mean, this is all on their page. And one of the things I like to do is just to follow along with the tutorial. You know, you can copy and paste. But to go through it, try to understand it. So that's what we're going to do now. It won't take too long. It'll be a lot of fun. So first of all, point out the page I'm going to be using this from. This is the Calico tutorial. So it's docsprojectcalico.org security tutorials Calico policy. And it's all there, okay? Great descriptions and it helps you understand. It even tells you how to clean it up so you don't leave a mess. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be using. And again, it's just a simple matter of copying and pasting. But, you know, we want to have some fun. So I'm going to, I've already done some of this. So I've created, I think I've created, no, I haven't. So, <laughs> I just thought, remembered I hadn't. I'm going to create a network, uh, na a namespace, I'm sorry, called Advanced Policy. Okay. And this is all just copying and pasting from their page. Now, I want to do this just to show that it works. Um, I know I'm not, uh, I am pressed a bit for time. So all I'm doing is copying and pasting. You can see I'm creating the namespace, I am creating the deployment, and then I am creating. A service okay now I already have a deny all so we don't do that we can skip that part nothing's working and in fact I'll just show you that nothing's working by we'll create a busy box container right here and we'll go inside it automatically you can do it that way and again this is all on that page so you know you don't have to uh, furiously copy stuff um, and we're gonna do a w get command to see if we can get anything. And guess what? We can't get anything because 
remember, we created a lockdown all policy. Okay, so we're not going to wait for that to time out because it'll take forever. We are going to exit the pod. We're going to clean this up. Now, on their page, um, they've got, you can copy and paste and use the Calico uh, CTL to create policies. I personally like to copy into a file. I'm just used to that. So I'm going to call this uh, allow egress. Okay, allow egress YAML. And instead of doing the, you know, Cal uh, Calico CTL create and then EOF, whatever, I'm just going to copy the actual policy part there. Okay. And it's all self explanatory. And that way I can just do a K create F allow egress. Okay. And there it goes. All right. So now let's see. Um, now that's allowing everything outside, it says, but not to Google. Okay. Um, no, to Google, but not to Nginx. Now, we didn't even try going to Google, so let's go back in here and let's see if that's correct. So, we will now do a Google, okay, from this pod. Remember, we got a default deny, Calico uh, global policy, which means that it's going to deny everything, which is wonderful. Um, oh, and look at that. So, they are correct. That is Google. That is working. Okay, excellent. Let's get out of there. Now, we didn't try that before, but it wouldn't have worked, okay? So what we just did now has allowed uh, everything out, out to Google. However, we didn't allow ingress into Nginx. So the problem is this, default deny across the board is default deny across the board, right? So you can allow outs, and in this case, it can go outside the cluster and go to Google, and Google can respond. And you can go out to the Nginx, but guess what the problem is? Um, or I'm sorry, you can go out, but then there's no ingress into an Nginx to allow it in, right? So you have to create that policy. So we'll do that as well. Again, I'm kind of rushing through this because I am worried about the time. However, it is straightforward. So let's call this allow Nginx, okay? The names of these YAML files are not important as long as you understand them. Because if you don't, then you're gonna spend a lot of time going, what is this? Okay, again, there it is. Simple policy, it's all on that web page. Remember, I'm not creating any of this. I don't claim to be the genius. And we're going to, I'm doing a K alias, so that's kubectl. K uh, creates F allow nginx. Okay, okay. And now, now we will go back into that. And remember, you can go back. I mean, most Linux people will know this, but you can, oh, oh my goodness, I think I put my thing too low. There we go, it's up now. Uh, let's clear that out actually, uh, one second. Uh, okay, there we go. So we're in the pod again, and now we are going to try to go to the Nginx, do a wget. Now we could also have done a, um, a curl, and there's all sorts of other commands you can do. Um, and it's working now, isn't that wonderful? So basically what has happened here? Uh, we already had our um, policy in place that we did from our last little uh, exercise. Okay, it was default deny. And then I said, I'm going to leave you with that and walk away. It was like, oh no, of course not. So we came back now and I wanted to show you when I said that you should take this little environment that we've created and play with it and, you know, get to know it and come back to it. Like, you know, maybe take a break on holiday for two weeks, come back and do some calico policies. And you don't have to think this all up yourself in your head. I know it's crazy networking stuff. You can go to the Calico website and just copy the examples, try them out, go through them a few times. And each time you go through them, try to sink a bit deeper into what, what's happening. Um, and that's where you can build on this. No one, I don't think, can just step into this and right away, oh, I get it, and start creating very complicated network policies. Certainly not me. But what you can do, of course, is you can go in and you can easily follow their examples, okay? So I highly recommend doing that. Now, um, the other thing that I'm interested in is, okay, so I've showed you the web page. Let me show you that again, just so you see it. And it's right here, one second. Okay, so again, there's this is just the Calico policy tutorial. There's other stuff in there. And this is what I've gone through. So the lockdown traffic part, we didn't do, of course, because we did it before, okay? But in fact, if you were starting fresh, you could do that. And then they're using wget, fine. You could try curl, doesn't matter. But um, after that, you allow egress, okay, from BusyBox, so it can get out. But what they're trying to show you there, it can get out, go out to Google, fine, but it can't go to the Nginx, because Nginx still is under the policy, uh, deny everything, ingress as well. So egress and ingress. So it's not gonna let you in. So we had to allow things into 
Nginx. And after that, it worked. Now, last but not least, there is the cleanup. Always remember to do a cleanup. And joking aside, there's a reason for that because, you know, this can get very confusing. And even though it's a test environment, and this test environment, by the way, you can redo. So you can wipe out your kind clusters and just redo from the start of the uh, presentation. So do it from that point, of course. However, eventually you're going to go into production and eventually it's not that you'll be testing things in production, but you'll be trying things out or, you know, you'll be doing things that you might need to clean things up. It's a good idea because what will happen is that if you don't clean them up, it can be very unfortunate. Now, these are calico policies, okay? So you can't just do a cube cuddle. You have to do a cube CTL calico command, okay? And then delete policy. Um, so we're going to delete the policies that we created and to clean things up. All right, it's always a good idea. There we go. And it has deleted that policy. It's going to greet the second policy we created. Uh, let's copy that. So same thing, uh, cube CTL. This is because we have the operator CTL and the customer resources. I'm sorry, um, Calico. And we will just copy this in. Okay, paste it in and it's deleted that. Um, and we can get rid of the group network policy too. And you can, by the way, shorten this, obviously, because I know that people don't want to, you know, type tons of stuff. It can be quite boring. So kubectl, calico, and you can then use a shortened version, which is um, delete policy, uh, ingress, allow. I think I just did that one, by the way. Yes, I did that one, so I don't need to do that one, but I need to do this one, the GMP, the Global Policy Default Deny, remember? So let's just go back here, and we will do a delete GMP, so you don't have to type the whole thing out. It would be quite annoying. Okay, and, oh, not supported. Oh, I did delete, delete. There we go, isn't that, isn't that nice? Typos are always fun. The command line, especially if you're in an exam, you're pressed for time. Okay, Global Policy is gone. Okay, that's it. I wanted to show you how you can... Uh, allow traffic in after I denied everything. And I also wanted to point out yet again the fantastic Calico documentation. Also, don't forget the free Calico courses, uh, which are also on the website. I'm gonna point those out, probably in learning. Where did my website go? There it went. Okay, so if you go here, learn, and there's the documentation, events, resource center, blogs, and guides. Go to documentation. Great documentation, Calico Cloud, oh, save my preferences, and um, Calico Enterprise as well, by the way, which is excellent. Um, also, there are the certifications, okay? So these are free, these are free, and you can enroll now, and they are tough. I mean, they're good. They're not just, you know, oh, I did five minutes and I got a certification. Get rid of this. So there you go, Calico Operator Level 1, AWS Operator, you've got the EBF Calico Operator, and the Azure. Okay, thank you very much and have a great CalicoCon.